Hey everybody, Paul here with another quick tip tutorial for this month. Today we're going to be taking a look at the color palette features inside of Blender 2.83. So without any further ado, let's jump straight in and take a look. So when you open up a new 2D animation file, everything is set up for you to start drawing immediately in Grease Pencil, and that's the setting that we want. You'll notice that your Properties window automatically defaults to your Active Tool and Workspace settings. And in it, we've got the Draw Brush, which is set to Pencil, as well as these Material settings, which happen to be greyed out. But you'll notice down here, there is an option to use a palette. So just going to set up a few things. First off, I'm going to hit the N key to bring in my tool palette over here. And then I shut down these brushes here just so that we can sort of focus on the color palette. And over here, we'll just take a look at uh, our grease pencil settings. You'll see that this 2D animation preset already creates a stroke object, which of course is blank because we want to draw on it, and a camera object, which is it's in its own collection. The layers have a line and a fill layer. And if you go down to your material properties, you'll see that it's already populated with some preset materials. We don't have to necessarily make materials anymore when using the vertex coloring color palette system. Why don't we go ahead and draw a quick fill. So I'm going to select the solid fill. I'm going to go into solid mode here to do the drawing to illustrate a couple of key features. So uh, let's just quickly draw a um, shape and you'll notice that the solid fill color, because we used our material settings mode, draws in gray. Now, if we were to draw in vertex color mode, and we can do that by simply switching to vertex color either here or here under the color tab in our tool contextual menu here, you'll see that all of a sudden everything is not grayed out, but you'll see that the mode is set to stroke so that, for example, if I were to draw another shape, it's gray. One thing that we have to note is that in solid mode, thanks to a uh, commenter, he made me aware of this, it's basically using the lighting from a matte cap or studio or flat, and the color settings is def by default set to material. So you're not gonna see it in solid mode, but if you click on vertex, this will change. Now they've gone blank because there isn't exactly vertex color information here. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just going to go to the eraser tool, set this to erase stroke and get rid of those. So that now when I draw, it still doesn't come up. That's because the mode is only set to stroke. What we have to do is switch it from stroke to fill or as I like to do, stroke and fill. So now that when we draw something, it's going to draw in the vertex color. That's great. We've got a stroke and we can draw in vertex color and we have a palette in which we can select a color, draw a shape, select a different color, draw a shape, so on and so forth. We can also use this thing called the tint brush. And what this does is it allow us to mix in a color to tint this object and effectively change the color from the palette. So for instance, if we wanted to tint it this dark blue, we could. But of course, because it's set to a very soft setting, a small radius and a strength that's not exactly one, you're gonna take a lot of time to color this in. So what I suggest you do is you bump that strength up to 100%, you take off your pressure sensitivity on your radius, you bump that radius right up, and you have to set that to stroke and fill, and when you begin to tint, that is going to tint those shapes. Uh, whatever shape that you're particularly uh, tinting. Now, what I really wanted to talk about is how do you create custom palettes? I'm gonna take you through three ways of doing that. So let's go ahead and delete this palette and create a new one. You'll see that there are no swatches. What we have to do is basically select a color and then hit the add button and that will add a swatch. And then we basically select another color, add a swatch and so on until we've got uh, a color palette that we want to use. And then we just simply select that color, draw a shape, and away we go, we're coloring. All with this solid fill material set to vertex color. But there is another way of doing things. I'm gonna go up here and switch my outliner to an image 
editor and I'm going to open an image that I've created uh, for another tutorial. Okay, so here is a comic style colored image with a bunch of colors. And what I can do with this image is go down to where it says image, go extract palette. It's gone extract palette from image. It creates a palette labeled the name of that image. In this case, it's called Cyberpunk Flats and it's broken down that palette. So if we went ahead and upped the threshold and we go extract palette, it creates this where it kind of breaks down all of the shades and there's a lot of color information here. Probably the lower the threshold, the better, especially for sort of tune shading. So we'll just delete that one. What I tend to like to do, and this is the last way that I like to generate palettes, is to go online to something like Coolers and you can basically generate a palette by just hitting start the generator. And then once you've got an account, what you can do is you can generate a palette randomly. You can change colors in that palette. You can view the shades and reselect uh, or reapply, uh, or you can uh, you know, drag colors around to make a different type of palette. And when you're happy with it, you go to export palette and you can export it as an image. You give it a title. You can ask it the color space. And in this case, hex is just fine. And when you export it, okay, uh, you can then import it into Blender. Here's one that I've created called Cyberpunk Girl. And when you extract a palette from here, you're going to get something a lot simpler. And so that is my preferred way of generating a color palette because uh, this means that I can use all of those colors. It's very simple to understand. And that color palette has been uh, generated for me so that I can then uh, just you know, select a color, draw a swatch, select a color, draw a swatch, so on and so forth, and then use those colors. Uh, and all the while I'm using the solid fill material, but we're working in vertex paint. And yes, even in solid viewport shading. Now in fully rendered mode, that's when we go to rendering. Uh, when you render that image, okay, that is the image that you're going to get, which is very faithful to what we're seeing on screen. So I hope you got a lot out of today's quick tip tutorial. As always, if you like what you see here, do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel so that you can be notified of any upcoming videos. And if you're feeling at all generous, you can join the legions of my Patreon supporters over at patreon.com. It's the support I get over on Patreon that makes the production of these videos possible. That's all for today. Thanks guys for watching. Bye for now.